Hello, 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 everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, Wendy. Ooh, wow, a new... <laughs> welcome, Wendy. It's, uh, yeah, welcome, Bart. Welcome, Edward. Welcome, Marty. Marty, I just saw you a few, <laughs> a couple of hours ago. That's great. Wendy, welcome to our Chi Talk. You're finally here. Thank you for joining. So uh, today we're going to talk about commitment, motivation, determination. It's a very interesting topic, very hard topic. And I wanted to share some wisdom from a practice called Sheng Gong. And then, uh, but I also wanted to kind of like open the discussion about it and, and talk with you first. So let's do, let's do a little opening ceremony like we always do. Uh, so we are recording it live. Um, my, just for the record, my name is, uh, it, this is going also on my podcast. So uh, my name is Eli Cohen, I'm a medical Qigong practitioner, energy healing coach, and this is Qi Talk. And we always talk about different subjects and just kind of open it to question and also just uh, not only questions, just kind of like almost like a masterminds. And especially with this topic, that would be interesting. I'd love to hear what you have to say about commitment and about determination, about habits, and 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 your you know your take on it or your experience with it. But before we we start, I wanted to um, to start with uh, with with a little bit of a chi ceremony, <laughs> we call it. And uh, let's start today by uh, stretching one arm to the side and knocking underneath the collarbone. So the length of the collarbone from the center of the chest to the shoulder's nest. The shoulder's nest is just this spot between the chest and the shoulder muscle. And then just close your eyes and inhale into this area and exhale from the mouth. Inhale from the nose, exhale from the mouth. And this is a really nice way to open the lungs these are acupressure point, acupuncture point for opening the lungs, strengthening your immune system. Why not? It's so easy to do. Let's go to the other side. So the other arm, inhale, exhale from the mouth. Take a deeper inhalation. I just feel where you are here in your heart, in your lungs. Let's take both hands and knock on the center chest and the sternum, the chest bone. Inhale and exhale. Okay, so let's put the hands on the heart, open the heart, and then just do a few circles. Circles is a very nice way to work with energy. Yeah, Qigong is the movement of Qigong based on cell, itself on circles. Spiraling movement. Spiraling movement are everywhere. The planets, the waves and the ocean. So this is really a very soothing. Just breathe into your heart center. It's almost like you are screwing in the energy of love and peace and whatever you need today. Nice, and let's pause the, this circling motion and just look down into our heart. So close the eyes, look into our heart and just smile to it like we are smiling into our baby your children, yeah, the organs, especially the heart. It's a very, very important organ in Chinese medicine, the heart, the organs, we see them as uh, children, as, uh, you know, you are responsible for the health of them. And one way to um, make them work better is to engage with the inner smile, internally, yeah, and sometimes when we smile into the heart, we meet different emotions. So if you put your mind there with curiosity, 
just kind of curious, how do I feel today emotionally? How do I feel right now emotionally? It's very interesting. This heart meditation is actually a practice of focusing on the heart center and just kind of meeting every emotion. And what you discover if you do it for a while is that it's like an onion. If you're not really attached to the emotion and you just observe them, kind of like curious about them, you would see that they, it's kind of like an onion. So one emotion would start and then it's going to end and another emotion would come and, and end also. And just, it's just kind of like a process. And at the core of the onion, there's always joy and love. So we don't have uh, half an hour to do this heart meditation. It's just connect to the center of the onion, to the joy and love. And it's just a smiling baby in your heart. Nice. Find the truth. The truth of the heart is joy. That's the truth. And that's the purpose that the Taoists believe this is the purpose of life. The life, the purpose of life is joyful expansion. You came here to be joyful, to share your joy to the benefit of yourself and all life. So let's connect with that core emotion. Joy expanding from the heart throughout the physical body the form and shape of your body, sending love of joy and love, waves of love and joy. Nice, and let's open the hands to the side, palm facing the front, opening the eyes, nice. Just a few minute meditation can, can do a lot, right? <laughs> so, so we always have this opening. So the, the, the practice, uh, pract not the practice, but the subject of deter being determined this is a very big, big topic, being uh, committed to something. You know, I've come across it uh, with many of my students, actually many of my clients that cannot commit to a practice, that cannot that have hardship. You know, you're very excited about doing Qigong every day. You're very excited about meditating every day or whatever, or juicing every day. <laughs> and then, uh, or whatever you decide to, that would benefit you. And after a little while, you, you file like you hit a wall. Does <laughs> that sound familiar? <laughs> Humanity, humans, we all experience the same thing. And so, so we're feeling like we're hitting a wall. And it becomes really difficult. Like, like <laughs> and we miss it and we don't do it. And then, we, and then there's a cascade events happening. And... Um, and I got emails about it. And, you know, with Zoom and COVID, people are a little bit more triggered and more stressed out. And it's actually harder to commit, it seems like. So it's, it's just interesting to uh, kind of to talk about this topic. I also wanted to share from like, um, from a Taoist perspective, a little bit about it, a practice called Shen Gong, uh, which is working with mine, uh, working with uh, your, your mind and, um, powerful practice too. But first, I don't know, I always talk first and then I thought, hey, why don't I just open it to the group first? I don't know if you, if you like to, uh, I, guess, I guess I can guide it uh, if you'd like me to, or you can really share anything you want, but uh, um, I can guide it in a way and say, what, what helped you in uh, sticking to something and, and, and commitment. What helped you? What, what internal practice did you have? Or you can speak about the difficulty or you can speak about uh, tactics that you this, uh, found out that works really good for... for uh, <laughs> do I put you on the spot? I mean, I can share too, but yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, Edward, go ahead. Um, yeah, it's funny, you really hit me with the juicing, because <laughs> three years ago, I was dating this uh, woman, and she looked at me and said, oh, you need green, you have to juice every day, and I'm halfway through a book that I started writing, but it's all about yes, it's just that simple, 
and we have the God-given ability to choose. And, you know, you just said, you know, hitting a wall. And I could say after three years or a year or a week, I don't want to juice anymore. I don't want to get up, you know. But I learned that thinking, just random thinking, is the lowest form of my ability. <laughs> and the minute I go, no, I'm not going to juice anymore. I'm not getting those cucumbers in the celery. I'm not doing that. I'm tired of this. I just reroute myself. And I have a saying and a phrase, go where you don't want to go and you'll get what you want. And all about yes, um, and no shuts down all possibility. I'm not going to do this anymore. No, no more juicing. So I stay in the power of uh, of yes, and I go where I don't want to go. I don't want to jump in the. Yesterday I was swimming in uh, in the lagoon with my friends, and she said, "Oh, this is so great to just jump in," and it cooled. And I didn't want to jump in, and I jumped in. Oh, my whole body cooled down. This is great. So it was like going where I don't want to go and, and getting what I want out of it. So it's about being a yes. Um, I have the God-given ability to choose. So I chose to jump into the lagoon yesterday. And um, I just wanted to resist. Oh, maybe it's a little too cold and I'm so hot and it's 100 degrees or whatever. So it's just rewiring, you know, three weeks scientific fact, three weeks to make or break a habit. So mm -hmm. it's building new habits of I'm going to go to Qigong every day. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to the gym every day or whatever. Mm -hmm. And stop the thought, the random thought. No, I don't want to go today. It's easier not to go. <laughs> Just go where you don't want to go and you're going to get what you want. And I love living my days like that. Love it. That is a lot of energy behind what you're saying. Wow. <laughs> a lot of energy and a lot of wisdom. So it's just... Uh... I, I, I'm, it's interesting, go where you don't want to go. So it's, it's um, you know, and I, I'm just going to share a little bit about a, a Taoist perspective, or um, I guess it's also Buddhist, kind of like uh, we're seeing the places of resistant, um, the places where we resist, it's a way to actually welcome them. So like uh, being grateful for... Uh, for for them to to teach you because we learn from we learn from uh, adversary from difficulties we usually grow through difficulties we we you know that's how we grow and we can either resist it or we can either or the other way to do it is to uh ask wh what what is the gift in it right what is the so so it's kind of like in in very similar to that perspective that you say go where you don't want to go Yes, because we have that reaction, that, that reaction of aversion towards the negative, towards what, <laughs> and you say, go, go for it. It's, it's kind of like the same way that we say, you know, welcome, welcome the negative, welcome the difficulties, welcome the crises, welcome, welcome all of it. Say welcome. Welcome is kind of like saying yes, really. It's, 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 it's kind of a very similar thing. And not only welcome, but being grateful for what is going to teach you. So, uh, so gratitude is, uh, is flipping the coin completely. And, and I'm seeing you that, that that's kind of like what you're talking about too, in a way. Yeah. And, and you know, if we challenge ourselves, you know, oh, I want to go over to, uh, to Ellie's house today. You know, he's going to make me do Qigong and I don't want to do it. It's too hot. But when I go to, well, it's Qigong and, you know, and, well, I'll, just turn it around 180 degrees in the other direction and go. And then you get the a miracle of, oh, wow, I feel so good after doing this exercise or after juicing. And, you know, gee, nothing negative shows up after drinking all these juices every morning or doing Qigong every day or, you know, whatever. I go, oh, miracle, this, this is great. <laughs> so just staying in that space. And also one other thing, also like with COVID, I got, well, I'm not supposed to be out driving down the road. I'm not supposed to be doing this. I'm supposed to be more inward, you know, and instead of saying, God, this is so bad. I don't want to stay in here anymore or whatever. It's like, okay, this is okay. You know, it's, I'm not supposed to be down the road at hundred miles an hour or something. So just yeah. switch everything to a positive and mm -hmm. being a yes to, okay, yes, I'm supposed to stay in right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, beautiful. Yes, beautiful. That's uh, 
That's really beautiful. I think for, for me personally, the COVID thing is that you, exactly when you welcome, when you welcome it, you start to see, you start to see where the energy can shift to, you know, we cannot travel, we cannot do this thing, right. but uh, the energy start to go internally and does other things. So uh, it's kind of just a, it's, it's actually kind of like a, a way of purging. I mean, I think a lot of people had a, a lot of internal stuff coming out and, and, and overall it did a lot of good stuff. Always, always, uh, always difficulty is, is an opportunity for spiritual growth um, f- for myself. I mean, this is why I'm here. Uh, if I didn't have my, my own pains and, and gone through my own healing, I wouldn't be here teaching what I do right now. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess, uh, you know, thank you, Edward. That's very insightful. Yeah, Marty, go ahead. So, you know, through this process, I've learned, and I guess, as I'm getting older too, of letting go of all of the things that would upset me before. And you're right, in that sorrow, you do have a learning process. And sometimes if you get too caught up in your commitments and you don't, you're, you're so focused on what you should be doing and, and not really realizing that it's okay to let go and, you know, one week you want to juice and then the next week you don't want to juice. But then the next week, you know, so it's a roller coaster of, of all of the things that we should do. Um, you know, like this morning, I said to my husband, I'm going to go get honey. And he said, oh, what are you going to get the honey for? Yeah, you know, and I said, no, I'm going. It was the best morning ever because <laughs> I got to spend it with Ellie and I learned a lot. So, you know, sometimes if you're resistant to say, oh, okay, I won't go, but you do push yourself. And I, and I, at first I couldn't find his house. So that was a challenge. <laughs> so, you know, of letting go that it's okay. You don't have to be perfect. You go and you juice and you enjoy the juice that you make. And then the next day you make green tea, you know, it, it, and especially in this kind of atmosphere that we all are, we should be staying home and we should not be doing this or it's okay. Like, jump in the water, enjoy the cool water, and you probably felt great after you did it, you know? <laughs> it's just a, an interesting process. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And what happened What happened if you do hit a wall and you really have an, a big aversion from doing it and you, you missed it, you didn't do juice that day? You just didn't do it. You didn't do the Qigong, you didn't do the meditation then what? That's okay, too. I'm learning that that's okay, too. You know, (laughs) nobody's perfect. And we're all trying to be in a perfect world where it's really not perfect. So it's and not letting that stress your body out, because Mm -hmm. then you get the stomach problems, and then you can't sleep at night. And it's, it's that roller coaster again of bad, not bad habits, but not healthy habits that, um, we need to, we really need to recognize in this particular time of life (laughs) because it's an unusual time that we need to really take care of ourselves. That's why I love doing your thing. It makes me stop when I'm getting that feeling inside and say, okay, breathe, take a few minutes and just breathe through this. Mm -hmm. And it helps. Mm -hmm. Nice. I love it. So I'll share a little bit too. Um, so thank you <laughs> so much wisdom and we are we all know the work uh you know in in uh working with resistant is really uh kind of like very similar of working with uh with negative emotion with negativity we have a, we have resistant from something that doesn't feel comfortable and when we're not doing the we're not juicing or we're not doing a lot of time what what happens is that we are self criticizing ourselves and we're falling off of the practice, the habit that we plan to take on, we, we're kind of falling off of it because uh, we have a lot of the self-critique comes in. So what's important in the day and the off days, and there'll be off days, they're always off days. We're not robots. And I mean, it's, it's, there's always going to be off days is to self-love. So self-love is so important counter it kind of like does the opposite of this self-critique that we have. So, so we have 
kind of like five pillars of Shen, of Shen Gong, of, of um, you know, working with the mind. And we're going to talk about it more extensively and do actually work with it with, in relation to negative emotions in the workshop coming up Sunday, if you are on it. But uh, the first one is, is welcome, is, is really kind of like what Edward said, is, uh, is gratitude. Gratitude, uh, we are grateful for, because there's always learning from, from negativity. There's always uh, a learning. And uh, this is why there's no regrets too. There's no regrets because where you were three years ago, you are not now. And when you're looking back and regretting something, you did, didn't have that information. You had to, to move through some experience to learn what you've learned. And now you're here, so it's kind of not fair to look back at yourself and regret something because really there's no regrets. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. so, so when you, when, uh, you know, so basically you, you're, always, you're always learning and, and we usually learn from, from, so there's no failure too because there's just learning. You know, this is kind of like what, what we talked about in the long program that some of you uh, were in is that there's no really failure. There's, always, there's just uh, feedback, no failure, only feedback. And, and this is, and when, we, and when we learn that, it's a very actually powerful, powerful uh, lesson. So uh, it, it really uh, brings you up much, much uh, faster when you, when you realize that, you know, I'm here to learn and this is what, what it is for. And uh, so the first, the first is gratitude and welcome and gratitude the energy of gratitude is, is there's a lot of studies on gratitude. It's probably one of the most powerful energy and most successful people use gratitude on a daily basis uh, to, to kind of, to support themselves and to support new habits, to support new lifestyles. Uh, so gratitude is important. The second one I just wanted to talk about, what we talked about is love, self-love. Uh, that helps when you're in your off days, but self-love is always good. And that's what we were starting our Qigong uh, sequence, right? When we tap and we start the practice with self-love. Another one that is really powerful is curiosity. And this is really a place that we're going to kind of get deeper in the, in the workshop coming up Sunday is curiosity. Curiosity is the root to, to, uh, to growth. So curiosity is the opposite of judgment. If you're curious about somebody, yeah, we can judge. Yeah, sometimes, you know, talk about this, this uh, issue of racism ca came out a lot in the United States lately. And, but, you know, racism is a form of judgment. So curiosity, curiosity about everybody, about yourself too. And curiosity of you know, and what is the habit that we decided to take on? So it's a big, it's a big sh subject being determined or committed to somebody, you know, somebody told you that it's really good to juice. So you start to juice, <laughs> but sometimes, but sometimes, you know, somebody that knocks on our, we, we always have these salespeople that knock on our door and trying to sell us something. Is it, is it really what, how, why did we take that on? So there's a lot of curiosity is, is a, is a full, spectrum of subject that is is very powerful of, of curious like why why did i why do i resist it so um and there's uh and there's form of curiosity that actually propels you into positivity which is a certain type of question that you ask like we did it up in the and um there is a question that starts with the word what or how uh, and, and they're very, very powerful to elicit change. And so it's kind of like, almost like coaching yourself. So, um, so curious about, uh, when, when resistant hit curiosity. So this goes into the five element, by the way. So we have the five element, we have the kidney, which is water. That's curiosity. Gratitude is the lungs. Yeah. We're going to kind of go over all of them. And, and then we have the liver. The liver is about what? The liver is about, the liver is a very young type of energy. The, the tree, yeah, the wood element, the tree is growing up to the sky. It's a very purposeful action. It's kind of like the energy that you started with when you took on this commitment. 
that's the liver chi. And, 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 and Edward, you have a very strong liver chi. <laughs> you say, just say yes and go for it. And that's really the powerful of, of liver chi. And uh, we call it choice. So choice. So, so when you kind of like uh, decided to not do what you decided to do today, the, the qigong or the juicing or the meditation, whatever you committed to, you actually made a choice. You made it a subconscious choice. You had an unconscious choice. You did a choice, but you didn't choose it consciously. <laughs> so so uh, strengthening the liver part in us, the, the, the conscious choice is a very powerful tool also working with resistance. So, yeah, yes, Edward, yeah. So uh, what I've learned to do is really to be conscious of my choice and, and go where you don't want to go and you'll get what you want. Even yesterday, it was like so hot already and it was like four o'clock and my son and daughter said, come on, we're going to the lagoon, we're going to have dinner. And I said, no, no, it's too hot. I'm and all of a sudden something came out of it that I didn't hear in a long time. And my son goes, dad, you're my rock. You got to be there in the lagoon with me. I said, David, that's so sweet to say. So out of nothing came something. And my mother would always say to me, Edward, the answers are in front of you. But it was always my answer. Yes, I'm going to juice. Yes, I'm going to jump in the lagoon. You know, and, and again, stop the resistance. And again, we have the God-given ability to choose. So I learned to choose being a yes, okay, I'll go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And lots of good things were said and came out of it. And it was socialization, which seems like a fun thing all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, thanks. So, so, yeah, so choosing and making the choice conscious is very, is very powerful. And also what, what, what decides, you know, so like sometimes we take a habit, but we're not full on there. Somebody told us that it's good and we're not, we're not fully there. So we say that what is the vision behind the, the, the choice that you make? What is the, the, the this new, whatever, is, is it, you want to do Qigong every day or you don't want to do meditation every day? Did it come from within? Did it, did it has heart in it? So we have the vision that comes from the, from the upper Dantian, I'm going to do that because this is good for my health, for my future. And then you have the heart. The heart is the gas. If you don't have the gas in your tank, you cannot, you have to have the heart there too. Yeah, so the, the heart is the gas in the tank. And then you have the vision. And then you have the body, right? Yeah, you wake up if you wake up, you didn't sleep good, you didn't do Qigong, or you didn't do, you, you don't feel good. It's really hard to uh, form new habits when you're tired. So we, we have the three Dantians. One, one is good food, good sleep, good water, good air. How much heart you have in what you're deciding to do and, and, and the vision. Uh, so, um, so this is a little bit about kind of like, you know, how we, how we work with resistance, right? And you guys were on it. <laughs> uh, anybody wants to add uh, one, more, one more thing from uh, either Anne or Bart or anybody or Marty again or uh, Wendy? Yes, Bart, go ahead. <clears throat> Okay, so um, I've been uh, teaching Qigong to a few friends in the park during COVID. The things yeah. that I know, the techniques and the exercises that I already know. So I've been teaching them. And when I do them in a group, it is uh, much easier than do it alone here in my house. So uh, to make a commitment with a few other people and three times a week from 2, 2 p.m. till 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And we just do it. Even I, if I would be alone, I would just often not do it, I think. But if you do it together, uh, then it's much easier. Beautiful. Love it. And you kind of sealed up the five elements be, we, with, the, with the fifth element being sharing. <laughs> 
the fifth element, the, uh, the where transformation. Are you, where are so, you doing yeah. your classes? Where are you doing your classes? In a, in a park, in a park in the city. In San Francisco? No, 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 in Belgium. Oh, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> <laughs> this is an international call. <laughs> There are a few parks in, this, in the city and we just do it in the parks and it's nice. And it's allowed, you, you can, it's not allowed to do sports, but you, you can do Qigong with social distancing. It's nice. Beautiful. And people are looking at us and they're curious and they're, what are they doing, but it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. That, that's really, that's really nice. That's a uh, beautiful Barton, you know, and this is, this is, uh, this is the whole, you know, as human, we are, we are uh, kind of a, a erd, right? We, when we have community, we, we have Sangha, you know, that's in Buddhism, this is one of the three things to be able to grow into enlightenment. And one of them is the Sangha, right? The Sangha, the, the community, is such an important it's it's the third leg on this uh, on this stool the stool has three legs and that's one of them so it's as important as the dharma as the teaching as the practice the sangha is so important the sharing and um we're really gonna elaborate about it more in the in the workshop on sunday so guys, thank you so much. That was a fun talk. And uh, how do we put it all to practice? And uh, what we do in the workshop on Sundays, I'm going to share also the powerful kind of questions and we're going to practice it a lot. So it's going to be a different workshop. It's going to be Qigong, but it's going to be also Shen Gong. And we're going to study how it's related to the five element theory and all that. So it's going to be uh, kind of a little more advanced and fun. And, 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 and I want it to be very um, experiential. So looking forward to it. All right, guys, thank you so much. Let's put the hands together and put the knuckles on the heart center, press the sternum, feel the heart again. Uh, and just kind of like few br breathing into the heart to kind of absorb what we talked about absorb whatever in this talk inspired you that you're going to take on or any any new habits that you want to form what would you which of these uh parts of this talk was very powerful for you Nice. All right. Thank you so much, guys. That was really fun. I'm really loving this Chi Talks. So I'll see you next week and uh, hopefully see you guys on Sunday or in next class. Bye. See you.